or secret that anybody really realizes. Amen? But beyond that, there's a reason why this can be kept secret, and I'm going to explain it to you from the inside out. What happens here is you've got a whole nest of demons in your mind. And if you even start thinking about betraying the brotherhood, if you even start thinking about going to the media or going to talk to somebody that could be dangerous, these demons know just where the pain centers are in your brain. And they can instantly inflict upon your brain through just electrical nerve stimulation such agony that it makes the pain a woman goes through when she has a baby seem like a walk in the park. And without any kind of outside scarring or any kind of bruising or anything, you think you're dying. You wish you would die. And all it takes is a couple of seconds of that and you rethink your plans to betray the brotherhood. Also because of this, and especially at this level, I only slightly experienced it at level four, it's almost like you're part of a giant organism. It's like your brain is just the cell of a larger brain. And, and the whole thing moves in unison. And, it, and it's sublimely malignant how perfectly this thing usually works unless God intervenes. Amen? And what happens is if, if you decide that you're going to go through this and you can fight your way through the pain, these demons will just cause a cerebral hemorrhage in your brain and you'll just drop dead in less than three minutes. Now the only way you can get around this is if you put your faith in Jesus Christ and that's what happened to me. I mean Jesus can stop this process but otherwise it's almost impossible to do this. The other reason, now I talked to you about the stick. Now I'm going to talk to you about the carrot. There's a carrot involved here too and that is the promise of immortality. You are told that because you've had this sexual marriage with a fallen angel that you are on your path to immortality, that you will live forever. And that's pretty neat if you really believe it. But as you will find out in a couple minutes, the uh, price that you have to pay for this supposed immortality is so profound and so evil that very few, few of us would ever want to pay it. It's important to understand that the price involves a kind of spiritual and sexual pyramid scheme of immense power, and I'm going to explain that. Most all of us, well, I think all of us, in fact, have seen this because it's on the back of our dollar bill, amen? This is the back of the Great Seal of the United States. And I doubt if it's news to many of you that this is also a highly constructed occult Masonic symbol. Uh, you've got here Anuit Chaped at Novus Ordo Seclorum. This year begins the New World Order. So when you hear people talking about the New World Order, that's not a new thing. This term has been around for at least a couple, three centuries, if not before that. And then you'll notice here the Roman numerals, 1776. Now everybody thinks, oh, isn't that wonderful? That's when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Yeah, but that wasn't when America was founded. America didn't really officially start as the United States until the Articles of Confederation were signed. And as a result, let's look at something else that began on May 1st, 1776. That's a high satanic holiday called Beltane. And that is the beginning of the Illuminati. That is what was started, a new world order, in 1776. Now, notice here there's 13 ranks in this pyramid. And I'm going to talk to you about what that means. Now, I'm going to kind of crack this code. And there's, this is, excuse me, it's important to understand that like any occultic symbol, this has multi-layers of meaning. And what I'm showing you today is not the only way to decode it, but it's the relevant way for our purposes this evening. This is how you break that down. If you'll notice, the lower levels here are the, the well-known U.S. Masonic degrees. They form the foundation of the pyramid. And then beyond that, you have, for example, the order of the trapezoid. That's, that's the beginning order of Satanism. Then you have the ancient and primitive rite of Memphis and Mizraim. That's the 97 degrees. 
Then you have the Ordo Templi Orientis, that's Crowley's brand of sexual masonry. Then you have the Palladium. The Palladium is where you have to marry a demon or a fallen angel. Then you have the Illuminati. I got one degree into that and then the Lord pulled me out of it, praise God. Above them are the nine unknown men. These are, are men, sorry, no women ladies. These are men who are extremely super high level occult masters who are selected, each one of them, to reign over a continent. And I used to know who the guy was that was over North America, but he's now deceased. And um, these men, in return, report to a group that's called the Seven. And these seven are very, very powerful fallen angels. They're what, is the, what the Bible calls principalities. And they, in turn, report to the great architect of the universe, Lucifer himself. His title in Hebrew is Ayan Sof Or, which translates as the light of limitless nothingness. In other words, Lucifer is a big zero. Um, and this is the hierarchy in basic form. I mean, you can break this down in other ways, but what I want you to understand is it's a giant spiritual, financial, and sexual pyramid scheme. What do I mean by that? Well, all this stuff costs money. And I think you all understand how a pyramid scheme works. You get a lot of people on the bottom to give a little bit of money, and the people on the top get rich. And then they run off with the money into the Cayman Islands or something. That's why this is illegal. But what happens here is you've got all these people, like, for example, when I went through the Blue Lodge, it cost me about $150 worth of to get degrees. Now, that was in the 70s. It's probably twice that today. And then I had to pay $150 for the Scottish Rite. I think I had to pay $130 for the York Rite. I had to pay another $150 for the Shrine, plus annual dues for all of these things. Now, in addition, there's dues for all of these things up here. And all this stuff adds up. These people are getting very, very wealthy. And if you don't believe me, look at the, look at the Shrine Temple in your community. That thing is incredibly, incredibly ornate. And all the money that, you know, like they have, do they have a shrine circus here once a year? They talk about their crippled children and all this stuff. I mean, we were driving down the highway coming up here, and we'd pass all these semis, and they'd have these, these little plaques on the back saying, oh, the Shriners help the crippled children. Yeah, right. The problem is, is that most of that money doesn't go to those crippled children. Only 3 to 4% of that money goes to the hospitals. The other 95% of it goes somewhere else. And that's allowed by the tax laws in this country. So th there's a tremendous amount of money being filtered upward by this. Now, additionally, there's a tremendous amount of energy. Think about this. There's all of these rituals going on all over the world. Like in my personal case, when I was involved in this stuff, I was going to rituals four nights a week. And Satan is up at the top of this pyramid receiving all of this as worship, even though it's boring. I mean, you know... I'll tell you, it is more interesting to watch an ice cube melt than it is to sit through most Masonic meetings. And if any of you are former Masons, you can probably give me a hearty amen to that. I mean, it's just, it's just, forget it. Uh, and, and yet Satan loves this because he's an egomaniac. He wants to be like God. He wants to receive our worship. And that's what he does with all these rituals. But there's also a profoundly sinister aspect of this, which I must get into. And I'm, I apologize in advance, because some of this is going to be kind of gross. But we have to talk about the royal secret of masonry and how that fits into this spiritual pyramid scheme. Realize that when you join the masons, you become yoked to sterling citizens like this. This is a list of all of the prominent occultists of the 20th century. All the witches, all the ceremonial magicians, all the Satanists, all of the theosophists and New Agers that are really movers and shakers of late 19th and early 20th century. Every single one of them was a Mason, a very high level Mason. Now what does that tell you? I knew many people and now some, most of these are now deceased, probably frying in hell. But, but even in my lifetime, when I was a Mason, I knew many, many fellow Masons that were occultists, that were devil worshipers. Now, if you're a Mason and you're a Christian, you're yoked to those people by a spiritual tie. 
that's much stronger than any rope. And what does the Bible